What I want to do now is to, in a sense, bring together everything that we've done so far on this course uh, and to think about the philosophies that exist uh, of building econometric models. And essentially there are two schools of thought that exist out there in terms of how we should actually formulate econometric models. The first of these is what we might call the specific to general uh, approach. And the second of these uh, is uh, called the uh, general to specific approach. Now, uh, the first of these two uh, was the approach that was uh, almost exclusively used up until the 80s. Uh, so chronologically this approach came first. And indeed, arguably, this is still probably on balance the most widely used uh, approach uh, today. Uh, the idea essentially of the specific to general approach is that it's an approach that's very closely tied to uh, economic or financial theory. And the idea here is that we would uh, find the theory that we wanted to test and we would estimate the econometric model that exactly tested that theory. Uh, and if we uh, added any extra bits onto the model or if we wanted to perform any diagnostic testing, these were done very much... Uh, as kind of optional add-ons. So in the specific to general approach, uh, diagnostic testing was conducted only in an ad hoc and very, very limited way, if at all. Uh, one uh, British set of econometricians, led by uh, David Hendry, uh, from uh, that, at that time the London School of Economics, suggested that this probably was not an appropriate uh, approach to use in many cases. Uh, most specifically, uh, Hendry suggested that uh, if we were to undertake this specific to general approach, then uh, because diagnostic testing wasn't really done in any very careful and systematic manner, then all of the problems with violation of the classical linear regression model assumptions that we've discussed could actually occur in practice. So we could end up with uh, an econometric model that's very, very uh, invalid at the end, whose conclusions are highly dubious and where any inferences that we've made which led to that final model were themselves invalid. So if, for example, we added or deleted variables on the basis of significance tests, then if the original regressions were not statistically adequately specified, in other words, if those original regressions violated the assumptions for ordinary least squares optimality, the classical linear regression model assumptions, then uh, those uh, inferences would be completely invalid. The general to specific approach, on the other hand, as I said, was one that's mainly associated with uh, the London School of Economics and in particular by David Hendry in the UK. And the philosophy behind this approach is that we start off with a, a very large model, uh, which sometimes is called uh, the uh, generalised unrestricted model, the GUM, uh, and uh, then we have to ensure at the very first stage that the model satisfies all of the assumptions that we were required to make for ordinary least squares optimality. So we conduct diagnostic tests for autocorrelation, heteroscedasticity, appropriate functional form, parameter stability, normality, and, and so on. Uh, this generalised unrestricted model is likely to be a very large model. And because the uh, problems associated with uh, including irrelevant variables are less serious econometrically than from excluding relevant variables, then we must ensure that any variable that we think might influence the dependent variable is included in this regression model. This regression model is likely to also include lots of lagged variables, uh, possibly uh, variables in first difference terms and so on. If when we uh, at this first stage test for violations of the assumptions, if any of these assumptions are violated, then we need to take the appropriate remedies to that. The, the, the appropriate remedies might include using a logarithmic formulation instead of a formulation in levels, using a formulation in differences instead of a formulation in, dev, in, in levels, uh, adding lags of variables, including dummy variables to remove outliers, including nonlinear, uh, for example, squared or cubed terms in the regression, and so on and so on.
Now it's important that all of these things occur before we test any hypotheses about the regression parameters. So in some ways uh, our econometric software that we use gives us a misleading picture as to which order we should actually conduct things in. Uh, we should in some senses uh, ignore the regression results that we get when we press go estimate the model uh, and come straight on to the diagnostic test results. Examine those diagnostic test results, fix any problems that are inherent within those models and only then uh, should we uh, come back to examine the model parameters and examine their t-ratios and their significances and, uh, and so on. So once we have a model that satisfies the assumptions of the classical linear regression model, it might be uh, a very big model with lots of lags of the variables uh, and it might be very hard to interpret. What we would then do, uh, therefore, is to uh, what we might term reparameterize the model. In other words, we would kind of rearrange it and, and play with it a bit. So, for example, what we would do is to knock out the most insignificant variables. We can remove those and re-estimate the regression. Secondly, we might find that some parameter estimates are not, uh, don't appear to be significantly different from one another. So we can test that, and if that null hypothesis is not rejected, then we can combine those variables uh, together. Those two stages will ensure that our model becomes more parsimonious. And a parsimonious model is one that describes as many features of the data as possible using as few uh, variables as possible. Uh, at every stage of the reparameterization, when we remove or combine variables, we need to still ensure that the uh, assumptions that we were required to make to ensure that ordinary least squares was an optimal estimation technique are still uh, upheld. If they're not, then we need to go back a stage and think again. Only at the end of doing all of these things should we finally go to look at our model and use our model for testing underlying financial theories, for forecasting the future values of the dependent variable, for formulating policies, uh, and so on and so on. So to kind of summarise again the general to specific approach, uh, what we're trying to do is to build a statistically adequate empirical model which satisfies the assumptions of the classical linear regression model, is parsimonious, that is, explains as much of the dependent variable using as few explanatory variables as possible. We want a model which then has the correct theoretical interpretation. In other words, uh, we would expect before we estimate the model that some relationships between the variables will be positive and some uh, will be negative. If we then come to estimate the model and we find that the sign on one of the parameters is not the one that we expected, for example we expected a positive relationship between x3t and yt and when we estimate it we found a negative relationship, uh, then that suggests that there's something wrong with either the model that we've estimated uh, or the theory that we started off with. Similarly, we'll often have an idea that uh, a, a, a parameter uh, should take on a value within some given range. So, for example, we might think that the value of the estimate for beta 3, beta 3 hat, should only take values between 0 and 1. Uh, because of what the values of the variables actually mean. Uh, if we then actually estimated beta 3 and we found that the estimate was 4.6, then again that would suggest that there's something wrong with either our theory or with the estimated model and that we need to kind of go back to the drawing board and look at these things again. So uh, the uh, general to specific approach or the kind of LSE or Hendry approach is the approach which is the most statistically justifiable, it's the most statistically valid approach, but it's often still not the approach that's actually used in practice. And we might ask ourselves the question, why is this the case? Well, the problem with the general to specific approach is we might end up with a statistically perfectly well specified model, but which actually doesn't test the financial or economic theory that we wanted to test in the first place. So in other words, we might have a perfectly adequate model statistically, but which uh, doesn't have a nice theoretical interpretation and is theoretically completely meaningless. So sadly in econometrics, we often have uh, a completely imperfect trade-off and we have to choose between two very imperfect alternatives. 
Either we use the general to specific approach and we end up with a perfectly statistically well specified model but with no nice uh, theoretical financial interpretation or we use the specific to general approach and that will probably test the theory that we wanted to test and we'll have a nice interpretable model but that will uh, probably imply that uh, the uh, model is not statistically adequate and therefore any conclusion we reach from that model could be invalid. So in both of those two cases uh, in some senses neither of them is ideal but unfortunately often in practice we're forced to make uh, a choice between the two and when you go away and estimate your own econometric models you'll have to make one of those two choices.